listening to the show for a while, you're like, you're just kind of shaking your head and you're like, yeah, it takes a while to get used to this dude, but it's, it has its own charm. And we are doing some episode on an upcoming Greek philosopher, and if you didn't like Herodotus, you might want to skip that one. The following story contains information about an ongoing criminal case. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty. This is just my opinion based on news articles. I am not alleging that the following person, suspect, or individuals may actually be guilty of this crime. This is just an comedy podcast where I'm talking about someone currently facing criminal charges. I have no proof one way or the other that this person is innocent or guilty. Again, all suspects in you the all suspects in the United States are innocent until proven guilty. Enjoy. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our first story here. Now, this first story is something that I read in the news uh, probably about a month or two ago, and I was like, oh, I got to cover this because it's so ridiculous. And then I completely forgot about it because the amount of ridiculous stuff that I deal with, things kind of fall to the wayside. But over the weekend when I was prepping all my episodes for the week, I said, oh, I need to find that story again because I I thought about it here and there. So this is the story. So speaking of mispronouncing people's names. I have no idea how to say this dude's name. It's, well, it looks like it's Askier. So, I mean, Askier, and he deserves to be called Askier, if that's not his real name. His name's Askier Ulfer. This guy's from Apopka, Florida. So, this is the story of Askier. Now, Askier was a guy, he's 26 years old. He was roommates with this girl named Christina Scar, which is a pretty dope name. It's much better than Askir. So anyways, Askir and Christina were roommates, and he was really starting to fall in love with her. This happened earlier this year. So he he was starting to fall in love with her, and Christina's, you know, kind of, oh, you know, he's a good roommate, he's a nice guy, but no, there's nothing between us. There's nothing there. She actually was dating somebody else, and he couldn't get over her. And she actually overheard him telling friends that, oh, yeah, you know, we're dating. And then she would have to correct him and be like, no, you know, he, he's a nice guy, but we're not dating. We're just friends. And, you know, ugh, ask yours like in the shadows. Ugh, someday I'll have you, Christina. Well, a lot of the inform- a lot of the personal details between the two, other than him standing in the shadow shaking his fist, a lot of the personal details between the two, I don't have a lot of access to. But for whatever reason... He moved out. Now, I can assume what the reason is, is because he was a total weirdo who was telling everyone he was dating his roommate and he was getting creepy. I don't think he moved out because he found a better deal across town. I would assume that it's just because he's a creepy guy. However, I have no proof of that. Just general world knowledge and existing on the planet for 42 years. That's my opinion. That's the reason he moved out. And the reason why I think that is because what follows. So he hatches a plan that really is something that you would see in a cartoon or a comic book. This is his this is what his plan is going to be. He's going to w- <laughs> I'm laughing because I know what's coming and it's also tragic but the details are funny. So, Askier his goal, he goes, "Okay, I have a master plan. I'm going to wait till she's alone and I'm going to wear a disguise. I'm going to wear all black with a hoodie on and I'm going to break into her house and I'm going to attack her and tie her up and like rough her up, right?" Give her the good old one-two. Probably he imagined it in his head that he comes out of the darkness and he commands her to, you know, like, get down. And she does because she's just in total fear of him. And that the power would get him off as well. And then once he had her restrained, he was going to then leave the house and then come back as Askier, no costume, and go, oh my god, Christina, you're, you're tied up. What's going on? Help me, Askier, help me. Like olive oil. And then he was going to untie her. And then she was going to fall in love with her hero, who saved the day, leave her boyfriend, be with Askir. So that was his plan. Now, there's a couple problems with that plan. The the biggest one being that if your plan goes 100%, if your plan has no problems with it whatsoever, and it actually works, which it wouldn't, but let's say that it goes off without a hitch, and you run and you save her, and she doesn't realize that an Askir-sized human was just holding her down five minutes ago, and smelt like Askir, and grunted like Askir, and had all the mannerisms that an Askir had, but in but in a ski mask. Assuming she's a total idiot, and she doesn't pick up on any of that, 
And then the, an Askir shaped person who is actually Askir runs into the room and goes, Whoa, I just passed a guy shaped exactly like me on the way out. What happened? And she falls in love with him. He's going, he's, that's a, that's a supervillain's plan. That, that, I've never read a comic book or a cartoon or a movie where the good guy comes up with that plan. Superman's not like, you know, the way that we can defeat Lex Luthor is, I'm going to break into Wonder Woman's house. Like, that's never, never, that's not a good guy's plan. But even if it went off without a hitch, he's going to spend the rest of his life knowing that he committed this horrible crime and put his loved one into a state of fear, and it worked, but he'll have to live with that guilt. And I just thought of this. What, is he going to resolve every fight like that in the future? Where she's like, you need to stay home with the kid. And he's like, but I have a video game tournament tonight. And she's like, no, you need to stay home. And he like looks to the closet where he keeps a ski mask. And then he like breaks in. And he's like, let him go to the video game tournament. And then Askir runs in. What did he say? So, I mean, like, it just, it doesn't work on its head. It just doesn't work. It's a stupid plan. So, of course, it doesn't work on real life. So, he breaks into the house because he wasn't living there anymore. And from the beginning, the plan is just goes sideways. He breaks into the house. And he's like, okay, step one, I'm going to jump out and I'm going to grab Christina. And then he realizes that he got there like 10 hours too early. So he hides in her closet. She comes home with her boyfriend. They fall asleep. And he's just a big old creep dude in the closet just standing there. Now, he got there way too early for the plan to work. So he's just stuck in the closet all night long. At a certain point, he ends up leaving the closet in the middle of the night. And going, like walking around the house a bit, getting some water. I can imagine him, like, watching television. But anyways, then he goes back in the closet. So in the morning, the boyfriend leaves, and now Christina Scar is home alone. And Askir jumps out of the closet, wearing all black, black ski mask, attacks her from behind. And the second part of his plan goes wrong, because she fights back like a monster. Like, he thought he was going to simply overpower her, and she was just fighting back too hard to the point, so he had to start beating her up. Which wasn't part of the plan. So he's like, really? They're now they're basically boxing in this bedroom. So he does eventually, though, overpower her because he's a bigger guy. But again, that wasn't part of the plan. I think he just thought that she would acquiesce to his powerful figure and his his raw masculine energy. He ends up saying, "Okay, now I'm going to duct tape your head." And duct tape, this little criminal tip, doesn't stick super well to hair. Duct tape doesn't stick super well. Like, it's a, it, you can sweat through it. It's not the best implement for kidnapping people, but you see it in movies, so people think it actually works. So he starts duct taping her head, because you just can't put it over someone's mouth. They'll just bite through it. So you have to, like, wrap it around their head a couple times. And as he's wrapping it, sticking to the hair, he begins cutting her hair so it doesn't stick as much. I mean, it's at, the, he should have just abandoned the plan at that point, but he didn't. He's duct taping her more and more. She's still resisting it, so now so now he throws her onto the bed, he chokes her until she passes out. She comes to, he chokes her until she passes out again. Now, the problem is, other than this idiot choking out this woman, is... And also, I'll say this, when I talk about serial killers, he attacked her from behind. And again, I, this I'll go on and on how what coward killers are. That this guy has to attack this woman from behind and then just beat her up. But anyway, he didn't just hop out of the closet and say, let's go. Like, it had to be the surprise attack, even though she was much smaller than him. He duct tapes her, chokes her, leaves. And now it's time to do his next part of the plan, where he's going to take off his costume. Take off his disguise. Imagine he had a big old timey fake mustache as well. And to run back into the house and be like, Christina, Christina, I'm here to save you. Conveniently. I'm the only, I just happen to walk into your house that I don't live in anymore. He walks back into the house. She's dead. He basically pretty much restricted her airways with the duct tape so she couldn't breathe enough. And then being choked out twice was enough that she couldn't regain the oxygen that she was losing. So she died. Now he's stuck with the body of this woman that he reportedly loved. His fingerprints are everywhere. He's in this house with his dead body. And he's like, oh, man. This plan is not working out the way that I thought it was going to. Aha. I got it. He concocts a plan on the spot that a woman broke into the house, killed Christina, and fought him. They, they boxed, he, but he did like a flying jump kick and knocked her through the mirror. Not like through the mirror like in a magical portal, but like cracked the mirror. But he's like, okay, so this is my plan. A woman broke into the house and killed her, and I walked in on the murder, and the woman wearing all black... We got in a tussle and she ran out. And he goes, well, there's only one way I can really sell that story. He then pulls a gun out 
shoots himself in the foot. No joke. Literally shoots himself in the foot. Ah, my foot, my foot. Calls the cops and says, oh my god, I'm at Christina's house. She's dead, she's dead. And this woman who I can barely identify shot me in the foot. Cops show up, take him to hospital, start investigating. And they're looking around and they're like, it doesn't look like this house was like broken into. I guess there was a burglar bar on the back door. I think Askier probably had a key to get in. But they were like, it doesn't look like anyone broke in. We have this body of this woman. We have this guy with a shot foot. You know, let's start working on this. And the way that Naskier pretty much got away with it, the way that he got, I'm sure he was on the police radar, but the way that Naskier ended up getting arrested was apparently he was talking to his lawyer on the phone and his sister overheard it, which is interesting. The sister overheard her brother talking on the phone about the details of the murder. The sister went to the father and the father's like, listen, I love my son, but if he did this, he did this. We have to do something about it. Sister and the father go to the police and the police arrest Askier. Now, his defense, and this is going to be interesting, his defense is that testimony was attorney-client privilege. That testimony should be inadmissible because he was talking to his lawyer. The fact that somebody else overheard it is irrelevant. It was a conversation that was a privileged conversation. So we'll see where that goes. This just happened in April. So they'll be carrying on these motions for a while and things like that. But we'll see where it goes legally. But just from like a logical standpoint, this guy's an idiot. Like, even if his plan had worked, he was a villain. It never works. Even in television shows where these plans are set up, they always fail. I've never seen this pro- this plot work. What made this 26-year-old guy think that this scare tactic was going to lead to a lifetime of love? Maybe he just wanted to have a one-night stand with her. Who knows? Wait a second. You know what I just realized? Okay, so his motive for the crime was a cliché. And so was the way he was. He got caught. How many times in sitcoms do you see like two people having a conversation in one room, and then, you know, Michelle Tanner walks by and overhears a conversation, and then looks at the camera and goes dun dun dun, and then the commercial break. He got caught in the most sitcom kind of way. Maybe he is the event horizon for how ridiculously pop culture society has become all of our crimes from now are going to be based on cliches and stories and they will also get caught by equally ridiculous cliches that is the future of law enforcement in the world that was a clip from our daily podcast dead rabbit radio dead rabbit radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts it's daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime news if you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from check the link below please like and subscribe and hit that little bell too that does some magical stuff thanks guys